everybody, we are on South Broadway in beautiful Denver, Colorado. We're about to head into Public Offering Brewing Co. And we're going to talk with Cody, uh, owner and brewer. Let's go say hi to him. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Liz. Cody. Nice to meet you. Nice thanks to meet again. you. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited to be here. Um, we're going to check out the tap room, we're going to check out the brew house, but I'm really excited about this brew house because I love this space. I love how open it is. Uh, so Thank take you. us in. Yeah, Let's talk about it. Um, so we run a 10 barrel system. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we got five fermenters. Um, a pretty standard brew house. I think the only kind of uh, fun item that we have is it's called a tube and shell. Okay. Um, so what we're able to do is um, anytime that we're... Um, whirlpooling uh, mostly for hoppy beers we can actually just run wort through the tube and shell it'll cool cool down the wort pretty fast instead of running it through the heat exchanger um, so we can kind of keep the temps in that 170 180 when we're whirlpooling so okay. predominantly use it for uh, hoppy beers but uh, we'll use it for pilsners and and lagers and other items as well so how much time approximately are you saving uh that? probably eight minutes in the winter or shorter um maybe 10 to 12 in the summer okay um, to, to knock down like 30 degrees roughly so okay um i see you've got a bit of technology taking place over there as well what do you got going yeah on this here? is a keg washer oh okay uh, we don't, <laughs> you know, there's a ton of kegs i have been holding off uh, but I, it's I, what i'm doing after this so yeah, yeah. What do you got Varun right now? Um, right now we have a couple of loggers um, that are just cold conditioning right now. So we've got a um, dark logger in here. I'm going to collab with a new brewery that's opening up uh, called Mad Max. Love that name. Uh, we have a West Coast Pilsner in uh, this tank. Um, I won't say what we have in this one because it's one of the um, beers we're doing for our anniversary that okay. we're reviving. Okay. Um, so these three are full and then I'm going to do tomorrow I'm brewing. Um, so we'll put another one of our new anniversary beers in. Right awesome. There. When's the anniversary? Uh, we're celebrating November 2nd. November 2nd. Yep. Awesome. Perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, how much are you brewing a week then? Just once a week? Uh, generally once a week, sometimes two. It kind of just ebbs and flows, uh, but generally about once a week. Okay. What does that equate to over the year then? How, about how much? Um, I believe this year we're roughly going to be like 300 and maybe 350 barrels, something okay. like that. So, nice. Yeah. And you're starting to distribute more? Uh, we actually do everything in-house. Okay. We, we just started canning. Um, okay. We use Wood, Woods Boss for that. Okay. Um, so this is our second run of cans. Um, we've done a couple of kegs here and there, uh, mostly just requests from bars. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the only one back here, and so I don't have a ton of time to, <laughs> to be taking right. kegs around town. And I think just the economics of it, it works better for us in here. So sure. Sure. Um, we're always trying to push as much beer out the door and keep it fresh. But I mean, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that then. Home brewing to opening a brewery? Yeah, tell us a little so bit about I, your backstory there. Um, so I actually got my degree in chemistry in college. Cool. Um, moved very far away from that, but um, <laughs> actually was a buddy of mine and I in high school um, started home brewing. Um, and then when I moved back here in 2006, um, a few of my friends had um, bought some more home brewing equipment. Um, I was the only bachelor at the time, <laughs> and so everything ended up at my house, and we kind yeah. of just would do it for fun, um, excuse to get together, and then yeah. uh, I think my chemistry side started to kind of kick in and wanted to continue to explore and explore yeah. it, um, and then it ended up uh, was kind of having a hard time of where I wanted to go with my um, previous job and kind of had one foot out the door. My wife was really pushing me to try to at least explore this, um, so I did the Regis awesome. um, uh, certification yep. um, and ended up entering over at station 26 cool. part of the deal with that was I kind of had to be in there full days um, since I already kind of had one foot out the door I think the goal was to always open up something like this sure. and so that's kind of where I got my start and nice. um, yeah uh, what year did you open this up then so we opened in 2022 okay November 2022 okay so this right. will be our second year awesome yeah 
how how easy how difficult was it finding this space uh it was i mean this is this is a yeah good, it was tough good size um, brew house yeah so i sale. started looking in 2019 um the fall of 2019 this was actually one of the first places that i looked at okay um and i like this space but unfortunately they had a lease um kind of in hand with someone else um i looked all over um was kind of looking for something that was you know four thousand square feet roughly okay um had you know outdoor seating had yeah. parking um and uh yeah so the previous kind of tenant of this place was looking to open a event space um kind of ran into some issues with permitting with the city as well as I think okay. got a little cold feet with um, where they were at with COVID. Sure. Um, so I ended up uh, signing the lease for this in 2021. Okay. Um, but it took us almost two years to, to open. So this was basically we had the garage doors um, and the four walls, but this was like a completely blank canvas. Okay. Um, so. Okay. I love that you decided to do it open. I think yeah. that's a huge part of when people walk in and they get to see the brew house. Right? Yeah. Where the magic happens, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody always wants to see the master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Why yeah. did you decide to start with, a, you know, a 10 barrel system? I feel like that's a pretty, it, a you know, size. I mean, I think it's kind of one of those things where you go back and forth, like it seemed like a seven to 10 barrel, yeah. um, especially given the size of our tap room was where I was leaning towards. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it's hindsight's always twenty twenty. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish that I would have done a seven barrel system um, just so that we could kind of continue to like roll through beer a little bit faster yeah. and keep it fresher. Um, I do like that I'm not in here all the time. Sure. I do have a family and kids. Yeah. And, and so it's it's a it's a balance for sure. Yeah. Um, we can do and I will do smaller batches. So we'll do seven barrels about the minimum that we could do. Sure. Um, but I will do that from time to time, just depending on kind of where our taps are and in sure. inventory and, and that. So we have a little bit of flexibility. Sure. For sure. Uh, talk to me about um, what you're brewing, any flagship, you're constantly rotating we through things. We're constantly rotating okay. through things. Yeah. I think uh, we've had a Kolsch that has stayed, I've probably brewed it now four times and always tweaking with it. Um, but that's probably the only beer that we've done that or one of the few that has been somewhat consistent. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of lagers that like seasonal lagers that um, kind of we brewed a second batch of, I guess, or a second turn okay. of it. Um, otherwise it seems like most of the feedback that I get is everyone's always looking for something, whatever's new on our tap list. Okay. And so I'm constantly brewing something different yeah. and brewing something new. So it's fun. It's challenging. But, yeah. yeah. Do you ever run into that maybe stubbornness versus creativity where you're like, I really like brewing this certain style of beer, but perhaps the customer or the demand says, I want all these other ones? Yeah, I think it's it's tricky because yeah. I think sometimes you're like, I would love to try to brew this, but perfect. Yeah, perfect it yeah. or kind of understand it. I mean, you know, it's, I think the hard thing is that you, do something you're like, I'd love to kind of see if I just made some minor tweaks with this, how it would end up the second yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, again, it's like, just I depends. just feel like the feedback is like, everyone wants something new and different. Yeah. Um, so, but maybe you get to focus on perfecting that with your anniversary beer. Yeah. Today? I mean, it'll be a different, kind of like you know, it's hint? sort of, um, yeah. where we are, where I am is, understanding the system from like the first day that we opened yeah. to where we are now is yeah. very different. And so, um, two of the beer, actually two of the beers that we're brewing were two of our kind of relatively earlier beers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, it's interesting to see, like, if I can see, you know, how far have, have I personally progressed and in, in doing sure. these. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's also been fun because we asked our, you know, our guests to, to vote on what they want to see back. Yeah. And, um, it was nice to see so many people had opinions and, and really Absolutely. cared. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have then a favorite style you like to brew? Uh, I like coffee beers because I, you know, they're fun. They're a ton of hops to explore, yep. to play around with. Yep. Um, I think from a brewing perspective, it kind of requires 
the most, I guess, like different tweaking or playing sure. around and, and sure. different steps. Yeah. Um, so I, I like those. I was never on the homebrewing side. I didn't do a ton of lagers, uh, but that's been super popular in here. So it's been kind of fun for me to, yeah. to explore that yeah. and, and do yeah. something a little bit new and different and take yeah. me out of my, I guess, comfort zone. Sure. Some regards, so. Sure. And I feel like there's definitely that demand. You were saying it earlier, like sessionable, crushable beers, right? Like I want to come in and have more than one. For and sure. not And not saying that just because it's hoppy, it has these super high ABV, but yep. oftentimes it tends to go hand in hand. Um, so I do love a lager for that, for sure. Hmm. Let's see. What about malty then? We kind of talked about that earlier too. Um, talk to me about <laughs> demand, hops, malts. How do you kind of keep up with that? Um, it's, you know, again, like this has been a big learning process for me from really from year one to year two to yeah. kind of see one learning just like what, you know, seasonality, when are our busy times, when are our slow times, how do I manage what we're brewing at any given time? How do I manage our inventory levels? Um, you know, I, I think that while when we first opened, I was, you know, and I've tried to say, we've stayed pretty true to it of saying that we're gonna be, you know, predominantly hot forward, um, kind of 60% of our menu typically is hot forward, but yeah. trying to have a, a well-rounded balance of everything else. Um, so I do like to try to have something malty on at least one option, <laughs> you know, and, and I think the nice thing is on the multi beers, sometimes those can have a little bit longer lifespan and runway where you sure. aren't really seeing the flavor fall sure. off. Sure. Um, I also just, you know, we can't have three different multi options, um, at the expense of, you know, everything else. Right. So, right. I think um, that's well said. yeah. All right. I think beer is so much more than just the beer itself. Right. So let's uh, go check out the tap room and then sit down and talk a little bit more than just the product. Sounds great. Even though that's the funnest part, right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. What a what a great background having a chemistry degree coming into. Yeah, the I mean, I I, I kind of left like college and was thinking I'm, so I'm never going to use this again, and and now I <laughs> am back to using it. So it's come a little full circle. We have a chain and disc. Um, Root shoot. Love those guys. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, sweet. yeah, I actually have a couple more. So go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So we, you know, it's obviously with the layout and everything. Um, this is the mill room and space is obviously super tight back here. And, and <laughs> Again, it's but, pretty clean, yeah. right? Like <laughs> considering, I feel like it's usually just a dust trap yeah, walking yeah, in, yeah. but you've taken some good measures to help mitigate that. Easy, easy yeah, on the locker, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Root Shoot's awesome. We, yeah, I, I know them from working at Station Twenty Six. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and they're just we got great to see their big bags. And, yeah, um, we kind of out of the gate uh, were craft malt certified. Okay. Um, so kind of using local grain was okay. important. Trying to use as much, you know small business local yep. ingredients was important so. yep uh who's the rar rars yeah yeah okay so you're sourcing, sourcing locally that makes a lot of sense love root shoe and they do everything themselves they drive yep. it down they talk yep. to you on the phone oh, yeah. they're driving it down yeah, yeah love them so much um are you producing gluten-free, gluten-reduced as we well? We gluten-reduce everything. Okay. Um, I, even if we, I, I don't brew seltzers. Um, part okay. of that is just capacity and demand. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think I could ever justify saying anything is gluten-free because we just have gluten floating around this sure. place all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, but we do gluten reduce. Uh, we just use Clarex kind of based on what the manufacturer yep. dosage rate is. Yep. And um, we did it with not all of our beers out of the gate. And then it started to become um, something that really resonated with our guests. Sure. And so it's, I, you know, I don't see any flavor difference or stability or anything like that. And it was kind of a no brainer. And you know, the cost to do it is, is minimal. So yeah. Yeah. And that I feel like has been like a selling point. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, does that have much of an effect on keeping ABVs lower as well? How does that 
kind of play into I'm, that game. I never, I, I guess like beyond just taking, you know, reducing the, the gluten, like I don't yeah. think it has any impact okay. on flavor, on, on attenuation, um, anything like that. Okay. So. Cool. Do you have quite the uh, air system as well going out of there? Uh, it's a, like just a little bit, yeah. yeah. Nothing too crazy. Cool. All right. I think that was a great spot to have. Yeah. Chips. Chips, yep. Love chips. <sighs> Safety. How is, um, if beer is considered food in the county of Col or Denver, how often do the health inspectors stop by very often? Uh, <laughs> fingers, I guess. Okay. Not I'm just we curious. That's no, like they question. haven't stopped by. I mean, we had to get. Um, obviously, we had to get it, yeah. uh, get the permit out of the yeah. gate. Um, yeah. But no, they haven't stopped by. Um, Denver Fire comes by. You know, I'd say they're sure. the only one that's consistent about being over here. That's good. Um, it's good. Yeah, I mean, they're doing their job and <laughs> they're that. super nice about it. And, uh, dogs are allowed on the patio then? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would love to have them in the tap room. And just yeah. again, it's the Dude. health code yeah. thing. So cool. You, you think that and then you ask how much hair builds up. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> oh, for God. sure. For I sure. I do not miss trying to sweep up dog yeah. hair. That's no. for sure. Um, this is just kind of like a side tangent you can record or not. Uh, I told you I was recently in Edinburgh and everything I came across, people, it was gluten gluten-free, okay. gluten-reduced. And okay. I was so surprised by that. But I was talking to someone else, and I think it's a measure of how they legally claim things in a title. Because a lot of it, I'm serious, it's like gluten-free, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. was so surprised yeah. by it. Um, but in hindsight, I was like, I bet it is more gluten-reduced. Just because I often feel like gluten-free is a big flavor difference. Yeah, yeah. From, oh, yeah, for know, sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a pretty big yeah, difference. Yeah. Whereas the beers I was drinking over there was low ABV IPAs and pale ales and everything was just like a lot of it was under 5% mm -hmm. and then it was also gluten free and I was like but it tastes so freaking yeah. good yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, it, and I was just blown away by how good it was and then getting back and the extracts and just different things that you put in to bring it into reduce uh -huh. Anyway, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how can they be gluten free yeah, and be this good? I don't really, <laughs> I mean, no I, like, I honestly, sometimes when I see, like, you know, we used to get seltzer from Denver Beer Co. Like, I've been in their facility, like, it's a mixed facility, right? Yeah. And whereas you go to Holiday and you're like, this is like, I mean, totally. it's like their tap room. You can't even bring gluten, you yeah. know, like, even the snacks are gluten free. It's like, so I feel like that's a fine balance. I mean, you know, we tell our staff, like, we're not, I'm not sending anything out to like, firmly or anything to say yeah. hey like what what are the levels on this it's just we use the clarex we use the dosage rate as they yeah. prescribe yeah. it's supposed to reduce it to 20 to under 20 yeah. parts per million yeah if it kind of affects you yeah. you know my thought is like you'll it, this shouldn't yeah. but like if, if you're gonna if you have celiac or anything and it's if like, you do absolutely. you're not like, gonna go reach, near it yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. so it's like Please, like, we have holiday leave for a reason yeah. type thing. I used to work at a vegan restaurant in Old Town, Arvada. Okay. Same type of thing. It yeah. was like, if it's, if you, if you have celiac or something, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go yeah. near this yeah. <laughs> yes, sort of sure. thing, right? For sure. And again, like, I feel like if you actually have it, you're going to know that. And I'm not saying that a lot of people don't, but some are more, um, it affects them differently. Yeah, for others. sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. So when you're opening a public offering, you know, you vetted the space, um, you decide you're going to go with the 10 barrel system and you've, you've got this beautiful tap room. Uh, you said it was kind of a bit of a blank canvas. Talk to me about where does the logo come from? Where does the name come from? Where do the colors come from? Because it is <coughs> a big part of yeah, why people yeah. come through the door. Um, so the name... Uh, it, it is a play off of um, my old kind of career in, in finance. Um, so obviously public offering ties into that. Um, and quite honestly, it's really hard now to find any sort of name. Like we, uh, my wife's in marketing and she's in the wrong kind of marketing for it to help me <laughs> in here, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but she had put me in touch with one of her um, work colleagues who I worked with and, you know, we kind of, I told him kind of my general story and what I was looking for um, at like the brewery in general. 
And so we probably came up with a list of like, I want to say like over a hundred names and wow. then like okay. vetted those and started like crossing off, well, we can't use that because it's trademarked or this or that. And then we kind of narrowed it to 10 and um, it was funny, like I hadn't really thought about what those were. And then we had a group in here and we were kind of talking about it. And I went back and like, look at the PowerPoint presentation they put on with like all the names. And yeah. um, so public offering kind of the, the idea is like, I um, part of the process in all this was um, for me to kind of hone my, um, I guess, like recipes and skills and get a little bit more feedback, like um, while I was working on finding space, I would have had a kind of online program where um, it started with me emailing friends and then that went to like friends of friends and friends of friends. Sure. Um, so I think I had like a list of like 70 people and I probably knew like 40% of those. Um, and I That's brew awesome. a beer on my homebrew system. If you lived in a certain zip code in Denver, I would deliver a a oh, nice. beer or two beers to your house. So nice. I asked you to, to do a, um, a, a quick like survey sure. basically. It was all blind, right? So you could get like real feedback and then I'd use that and say, okay, like, you know, did Sexual. this work, did it not? But so the idea, like it kind of, you know, part of that was just trying to make fee people feel like, you know, obviously like they don't own the brewery, but like we want you to feel like this is partially yours. Yeah. Or, like you feel like a tie to it. That. um so you know the logo obviously like again it Thanks plays right off now. of public <laughs> um public finance with like yep. a, a, or i guess finance with bear and a bull but yep. the idea really is like no matter who you are where you come from walk of life like whether you're a bull or a bear we can all bond over beer okay. um and so that's kind of the I guess the idea behind the logo cool. um, and then obviously with this space trying to make people feel like it's their brewery they're a part of the brewery we had to have a very open concept sure. um, so that was a big reason why we you know why you can see everything yeah. uh, you know I also want people to realize like yeah you can walk and see that we've got bags of root shoot back there you yeah. can see the grain like you can literally follow the beer from like the grain all the way through the brewing process, you know, you can see it in the, in the tanks, um, in our walk-in. Cool. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, the idea is like part of the reason why, you know, I have signs on the back of the fermenters is so that people can see like, okay, what's coming next and you know, what is in this? And you know, I'm sure some people are like, I don't really care. And some people maybe get really excited and, and say like, oh, I, you know, they've heard of this hop and I want yeah. to try it or like, I feel like it's always a mix. Thing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. That's super cool. And I've never heard of anybody like, home brewing and then taking their beers out to people to get feedback. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, neither, yeah. I definitely really put nice. some some bad beers out there, but it was, <laughs> you know, it's like. It, can't be perfect every day. No, right? and it was a good <laughs> thing, too, to kind of see, like, on a sign-up sheet, like, if I release, I mean, it, you know, it's true. Like, if I say, hey, we've got an amber this week, like, maybe I have, you know, 20 people sign up. Whereas if it was, like, an IPA, we got 40 people. And, sure. like, there'd be a cap of how much I could I could could brew because it was going off of a five gallon system but yeah. um that was kind of interesting for me at least to kind of see like hey like what do people care about and, and things like that so yeah. um yeah that's smart that's a good uh, market research for yeah for sure of you. for sure and i feel like it's extended right like you continually do that do yeah you? yeah i mean this is like one big experiment <laughs> i feel like in here it's kind of like we'll throw things against the wall and you know hopefully it works sometimes it doesn't and um, 10 barrels is a fair amount of beer, but yeah. you know, you can work through it yeah. and figure it out. When you're getting guest feedback then within the tap room for what you're still brewing, uh, are you sending, are you putting out little survey notes or is it just general mm. word of mouth? <sighs> no, I mean, our, you know, our, I try to have our staff like, you know, keep lines of communication open where it's like, if sure. you know, whether it's positive or, or negative, like I, you know, I've got thick skin. It's not going to hurt my feelings if someone is like, I, you know, didn't like the way that this tasted or this or that. So I think that's a, a big thing of just having our staff know like, hey, please, you know, I want to hear that when you say like people come in and they're looking for something malty and we don't have it on. It's like, okay, I'm seeing that, we, you know, maybe it's not something super malty, but it is important to have mm -hmm. an option. Because I do, I do want people, everyone to walk in here and feel like, or guests to walk in here and feel like they, there is something for them, sure. you know? And sometimes I think that that's making sure that, our staff also knows like 
you know, maybe push a little bit more of the experience, you know, or it's sure. a hot day. Like you might sure. really like something malty, but you know, I love drinking this sour, this fruited sour because it's just super quenching, like thirst quenching. And, you know, so I think it's kind of also trying to push people a little bit to be like, I understand that you like malt, but there are, you know, a lot of other options for a reason. Yeah. Keep your mind open. Yeah. 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 What about um, visitors coming through the Denver area? Do, does that really influence that feedback that's coming? Like, do you know it? Do you even? Uh, it's a little hard. I mean, you know, I, I think like anyone, I'm, I'm um, guilty of going back and looking at Untapped and sure. trying to like parse, you know, whatever I can out of there. And sometimes you can see like this person clearly doesn't live here. You know, um, it just. It, it's it's hard it's hard to gauge like who I'm you know I know like and I know that our staff knows guests that are local and neighbor and come a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it is hard to to gauge where people are coming from. How did they hear about us? Sure. Um, things like that. So yeah, but you got to get your data. You know, I get. I yeah, like no, I'm for sure, more of the for sure. Right? The yeah, more, the better. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think a lot of it is just our staff starting conversations with people and and kind of learning that way and do you think and, there's um, really that big of a difference of what people who regularly come in drink versus people who are just stopping by a drink um yeah i i don't know that's tough i, I yes I and think no it is a, it yeah. is a hard question yeah. um I, you know i think that those that our more of our regulars it's you know again it's kind of like oh i heard that you had you're releasing this new beer i want to come in and try yep. it yep. um you know I, I think like anything like in the industry it's you know hoppy beers are what we sell the most of mm -hmm. um so i think if someone just kind of walks in from off the street and doesn't know us like if i'm you know i guess like passport like hot passport yep. is a good frame of reference for me like i, I would venture to guess that a lot of the beers that we sell through Hot Passport because it's people kind of bouncing from brewery to brewery. Yep. And usually it's not necessarily like in their neighborhood mm -hmm. um, that we probably sell way more hot floor beers than okay. anything else. Okay. What's it like being down in South Broadway? <laughs> I mean, it's such like it's, a busy area. You've got to have some influx of new people, but there's also a lot of community. And yeah. Kind of an it's a intense spot with a lot of competition. It is. You know, I mean, I think that when we first opened, there was a lot of, oh, you just opened next to grandma's house and you've got Ratio and, you know, Platt Park and Denver Beer Co. and the Post. And there are a lot of breweries around here. Um, you know, my perspective was we're kind of the new kid on the block. No one knows about us. No one should really worry about us because, you know, you've had however many years to establish your brand and, and we don't have anything. Um, but I also think it's nice that people will come in here and say, I just came from, you know, wherever, and yeah. they recommend that you come here. It's, you know, we might have someone walk in at one and it's like, Hey, we don't open until three, but you know what? Like Platt park is, is open. I know they're open ratio is open. Um, you can kind of see things turning down here. Um, it is tricky because Broadway for being such a big thoroughfare, everyone is just like zooming by. Um, yeah. we are somewhat fortunate that, we're neighbors with Corvus. So out of the gate, it's just, they, you know, attract a lot, a lot of people. And so I think people kind of see, um, we would have a lot of neighbor businesses as we were doing the construction and getting close to open would constantly kind of be like poking their head in <laughs> and whatnot. Um, but I also, you know, we were too short staffed this year, but last year when um, Pearl Street um, revived their Oktoberfest and, and we poured there and I feel like we would have a lot of people say, and we still, I mean, here at period, but a lot of people are like, oh, I live in this neighborhood. I've been here for so many years and I like, just happened, just learned about you guys or, yeah. you know, just kind of like I walked by you so many times and then I just finally came in and, um, so it's tricky just because I don't, we don't get that like downtown, you know, tourism, um, there are a fair amount of new apartments going up, yeah. but I, we just still haven't seen that yet. Okay. Um, and we back up to neighborhoods, but it's not, you know, it, there just aren't a lot of people necessarily like walking up and down South Broadway all the time. But 
So then what kind of uh, events are drawing people in or what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> it's always a, it's a struggle. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we do um, trivia, which has been great. Um, we have a, a local guy, Travis. He just does it with us in Bent Barley. He's hilarious. Yeah. Um, you know, I like using him because he's um, very personable, very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's not just kind of sitting there reading questions and giving answers. Um, we just started bingo. I think we're, we've done it three or four times and that's been, um, done well for us as well. Uh, we've tried music. Uh, we were doing a fair amount of live music, like call it once a month, maybe once every two months. Okay. And it's just hard to gauge sometimes. Like, are we pushing people out because... They don't want something really loud mm -hmm. or if it seems really busy in here, is that just because it's a busy day or like the, the musicians actually, actually attract them? Right. Um, you know, I think that right now the industry is really pushing like to get younger drinkers. You need to make these like experiences and mm -hmm. this and that. And it, we're kind of struggling with like what, what connects with people, what doesn't, what makes like, frankly business sense. Um, yeah. For us, and you know, sometimes I, I'm just like maybe people just want to come here and relax and enjoy a beer and enjoy the space, yeah. and like that's the experience. And yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's tricky. I mean, I know our staff is always like do more events because they, you know, they want to bring as many people in sure. here as possible. It's like just because we have an event doesn't mean that it's going to resonate with people. And you know, it's trying to find like what's the purpose of the event? Who are yeah. we? You know, who are we? marketing it to how are we getting them interested do they, are they even interested um and it's just it's hard to to figure out and measure yeah <clears throat> it's marketing in a nutshell right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always hard because there isn't necessarily a defined number attached to it so yeah yeah it makes it, it makes it really hard to figure out if there's any roi and if it's worth the headache for sure everything that for you're sure putting yeah into it. yeah it's uh, like and i mean I, you know it's kind of like oh you didn't push it enough on Instagram or this or that. It's like, well, I can, you know, sometimes like, do we push this too hard? And then people just tone us out. Cause they're like, I get it. Like yeah. I'm just over yeah, it, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tricky. Like, just cause you market, it doesn't mean that anyone's going to care, I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you build it, it will come. Yeah. Not, not always. Yeah, not always. Not always. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I love the idea of, I see this vent grain coming up here uh, of incorporating, right. Uh, if, Reusing material, mm -hmm. right? That's pretty brilliant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, have you done it before? No, this That's is first. a this is a one off. This is new. Um, I don't, you know. Again, we'll in, the, in the experiment, it's like we'll see. Grain Bakers is based out of California. Oh, okay. Um, so I think she, Caitlin is trying to. And she's almost testing the waters here. I know that she does. She's done a, a lot of events in Boston, and I think that that's worked well for, for her. Gotcha. Um, so she's going to expand the So, she, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. us, Woods Boss, and Beerstadt are the ones that are doing it this week. And oh, nice. um, we'll see. I mean, again, it's, you know, $60 a ticket. And sometimes I'm like, that sounds more ca ca like California <laughs> pricing to me. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, yeah it's like, it's just hard to, you know, again, it's, but I can't really say, like, Maybe it should be like, this is her business model and, yeah. you know, but it, it's tricky too, because it was kind of pitched like, we want you to collaborate with us on Instagram, but we'll do a lot of the marketing work. And then sometimes it's like, I feel like we're getting pushed, like, you're not posting this enough or this or that. And it's like, well, we have a lot of other things that we kind of need to focus on, you know, this yeah. is one day and. 365 like yeah 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 and yeah. there's a lot so to it's... say about the neighborhoods that are around you right yeah like for you're sure still tapping deeper and deeper into that yep while also competing with what's around you although it is a collaborative community-based yeah, profession yeah. at the end of the day is it a business or is it a hobby right and business is going to keep people coming through the doors and yeah i feel like that does resonate with a good walking score for uh -huh. lack of better words. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and not necessarily just drawing in for the big wow factors. I think you have to have the big wow factors events, yep. trivia and bingo. Yeah. Yep. But make it consistent. Right. Yep. So people know that they can rely on you for a good beer and a good time. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're always talking about like, right. Like there's this, 
maybe a plateau in the industry, right? I mean, grandma's house is, mm -hmm. is no more, mm -hmm. and there's been some in and out breweries, especially mm -hmm. on the street. Yep, breweries still pop up. Yeah, they so, just go right back in. Yeah, they come yeah. right back in. So clearly something's working. Um, and and how do you fill the space consistently? Like I said, like you, you have a big space. Yeah. You can yeah, fill so we a lot a bit, of people We have a very big here. space, yeah. yeah. Um, you know. I also think there's a bit of a pro and con with so many other breweries in this in, so close is like you don't need to necessarily duplicate the same events that they're doing. Yeah, exactly. But if anything, yeah. then you can go, cool, I can win those out because Monolith has yeah. music every yeah. Friday. Yeah, 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 we don't need yeah. music every Friday. Let's do something different. Right. It, versus kind of being in the solo area where really like you're trying to fulfill the, like everything. the entertainment, yep. everything center almost makes it harder. You kind of get to be like, oh, cool, we're going to not do that now. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. For and sure. then push to our friends. Yeah, go over there for music. That'll be a great time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too loud? Come over to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also see opportunities for, um, and I, I don't know how this plays out from a, a business perspective, but like sharing sharing or collaborating, tap takeovers, that sort of thing, like um I don't know. Somebody brought this up the other day. We're putting, um, not making it a tap house, but breweries sharing more taps together. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not just within the brewing process and sharing ingredients and mm -hmm. pushing a beer out together. But again, marketing that together as well. So people can say, oh, I can get two in the same yeah. place, uh -huh. that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I think events and how you market that plays into a big part of that. And sure. it, I feel like, you know, okay, so you got open in 22, so you're you're post COVID, and you're in a big space and an an interesting part of the area. You've got people zooming by, but there are a lot of neighborhoods behind us. So how you're keeping up with filling those seats, I guess, is always interesting. Um, I like your patio. I didn't know you had like, a patio. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. It's like we constantly, because it's not out front, yeah. no know. one realizes that we have the patio. And, you know, it's uh, we've tried to really push this year of making that a much more comfortable space, uh, making it feel a little bit greener, like you aren't looking right back into the alley, like you aren't necessarily like on South Broadway. Yeah. Um, and you know, sometimes it's just one of those things where it just takes time and visibility and people yeah. seeing that, Big you know. Sign that's like, yeah, patio. <laughs> yes, exactly. Get this dumb yeah, as yeah, yeah. Are. No, Live for patio. Sure. Yeah, the, exactly. <laughs> so it was really funny. So when I helped open Four Noses, we ended up with one of those like white yard signs with the flimsy metal, and we literally just sharpened on brewery with an arrow. <laughs> yeah. And the amount of people that came in and yeah. were like, Oh, I oh, saw that yeah. sign. We're like, you didn't see the giant like brewery painted across the entire back of yeah, the building, yeah. but this shitty little white sign drew you in, and it was it was unique. It was <laughs> astonishing yeah. how many people were yeah. like, I saw that sign. It came in, and we're like, why don't we paint they this? Thing? Yeah, no, for sure. Why don't we paint know. this big fucking mural on this wall? Yeah. Nobody reads it. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, it's funny how like the simple little things, I mean, you've brought it up, you're just like, you hear it from people and you're like, really? That's, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's all I needed. Yeah. All right. Live nudes work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny um, to put that up. That'd be like, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just a flashing sign right when you walk in. Just kidding. <laughs> but I'm sure like, uh, I'm a dog mom, big dog lover. Like I want to know can I bring my dog? Right. So I know mm -hmm. they can't come inside, but whatever you got to do to, you know, make it easy for me to give you my money. I like, I want to drink beer and nine times out of 10, my dog is going to be with me. And if I know that patio is back there, I'm going to come because of, because it is there, mm -hmm. because I know I can comfortably sit down and not worry about that. Mm -hmm. I realize not everybody has a dog and I'm playing and to myself. But in I, Colorado, quite yeah, yeah. In Colorado is a huge yeah canine community and so for better or worse going dog friendly dog friendly over whatever mount that you need to or patio friendly right? yeah yep over 300 days of sunlight yeah for people sure. are going to want to sit outside i think that's a big yeah, big part um what can you tell us about um anything new coming up or besides the anniversary okay. that's a big thing we got uh, please thing. get into that that's huge yeah. two years you know um <clears throat> that people can look forward to 
Um, you know, I think like we talked about, we are constantly rotating our offerings. You know, I think some people maybe it's always hard for me to tell, like, do we, should we have some sort of core beers? I, I, the feedback that I feel like we get the most is, wow, you guys never have the same beer. I kind of, you know, they, I think they guess appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just one of those things where we're constantly, you know, rotating through things um, and trying, you know, new grain, malt styles, what have you. Um, certainly our anniversary party is, is the big one, um, coming up and we're being it on kind of the heels of Halloween. Um, we're kind of doing a day of the dead that theme is. on this one. Awesome. Um, so we're reviving a few beers that we Love previously, it. um, brewed and, you know, took feedback from our guests as to what they wanted us to bring back and put that to vote. Uh, we will have live music that day. Um, we will likely have a face uh, painter. We, you know, we get, I think the other tough thing in here is the mix of demographics that we get. Okay. We get a lot of families. Mm -hmm. We also get a lot of, you know, either empty nesters or people without kids. And mm -hmm. sometimes those kind of butt heads a little bit. And it's, it's hard to figure <laughs> out like... <laughs> You know, I can't push one group out at the expense of the other. And yeah. I totally understand that sometimes you want to come in, you know, I think the most negative feedback that we've gotten is there were too many kids in there. It was like, you know, and kind of like, well, okay, just come at 6 p.m., not 2, you know? You right, know? again, if it's, if, it's, if it's in the marketing and the advertising, right, that this is family Yeah, friendly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I you know, I think for the most part, like the families are well-behaved and I, I get it. It's, I'm a parent and sometimes guys. you're like, you're playing pretty quietly over there. Like I'm going to not fully pay attention to you. And, you <laughs> yeah, know, it's yeah. just like, I think it's a struggle for everyone, but, yeah. um, so yeah. So, I, you know, I think for us, it's trying to make that balance. So we will likely have a face painter. Um, uh, we have Delilah's tacos, who is uh, a good truck for us. Um, nice. I think we'll have some glassware, hopefully, um, I'm trying to think what else. A lot of new beer releases. Awesome. So, yeah. I think that's a great excitement for yeah. people, especially if the feedback is we want new and new release styles yeah. coming yeah. out. Right? Yeah. Um, you brought up Delilah's Tacos. What other kind of food trucks do you have coming through? And are they setting up back by the patio here? Uh, <laughs> that's a battle. <laughs> as a food um, lover. It's food easier. <laughs> we you know, try to get as much of a diversity as we can. You know, I think that, you certainly have trucks that come in and I think understand that there will be slow days some days yep. and then other days it's going to be really busy and, you know, hopefully you kind of take the good with the bad sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we certainly do have a lot of, I'd say like Mexican or Latin cuisine in here. Um, we do have pizza, like the blue pan has just started coming and, and they're pretty consistent. Um, at least we try to have them in, you know, once or twice a, a month. Um, so it kind of rotates, um, you know, it's easier for us to put them out back. And I think in general for most of the year, well, for certain times during the year, you know, when our patio is really busy, that's probably the best place for them. But I also sure. understand like they're trying to run a business. So they want to be out front. We just can't. Tell them they need a live nude sign. <laughs> yeah, yes. We just <laughs> can't always guarantee, you know, like that we can block off space right in front of our, right. our, right. our place. Really. So it's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's tricky. Like, yeah. it's tricky. Um, how much do you think uh, the food offering, does that play into uh, how people come and go. Do you think, um, it is a big difference of whether or not you have a food option? Yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, I, I think that we've had some feedback from guests on some trucks that, you know, maybe like were a little bit slower to, to put food out or, you know, maybe weren't as, um, focused on the, the guest experience, like kind of just coming in and mm. screaming in the middle of a tap room, like I have <laughs> like chicken burrito, you know, whatever. You're like, oh my gosh, okay. Come There's get probably your a better burrito. way to do this, Say yeah. Um, That's hilarious. You know, I mean, I, there are certainly trucks that have a following that, yep. Um, yep. you know, if, if we have them here, they're probably drawing people that, you know, wouldn't necessarily come in. So it's yeah. 
great for us as well, you know. Right. Um, so, but I also, you know, I know we understand they're running a business and we don't have them in here all the time. You know, I think it's kind of understanding the dynamic of what do you need revenue wise for this to make sense for right. you? Cause I'm not gonna have you come in on a, you know, if we know like it's seasonally, okay, our Sundays are starting to slow down. Like I'm not gonna start, we're not gonna start booking food trucks um, if they're just gonna say, oh, like, right. you know, business is too slow. So right. I think it's kind of, and obviously every truck is different in what they need and, and their overhead and whatnot. So I think mm -hmm. it's kind of just like developing those relationships and understanding that. And Are, are you then being like, hey, like, Feel free to bring in food, or we've got snacks on yeah, the we, counter. Yeah, we food options. Yeah, we do. Well, yeah, I mean. Yeah, we. I mean, we tell everyone you're more than welcome yeah. to to bring in your own food. You know, I, the tricky thing again around here is there's not something super, you know, a door down that's that's um, food that you can get. Um, and you know, I think we kind of have to be careful a little bit. Like we had, you know, baby showers in here, and they bring a big spread of food because we say you're welcome to do that. And then the truck is like, why did you just, you know, why do you have this huge group, but they're not going to buy anything from yeah. me? And it's yeah. like, I, you know, I can't stop yeah, it's just hard. Like, I, you know, we're trying to run a business here ourselves. Yeah. And, and I, you know, if that, if I need to, if we need to allow groups to bring in their own food to get them to come in here, I'm more certainly not going to say no. I have to ask about coming off of festival season. Great American Beer Festival, mm. not Oktoberfest, but I guess it was also Oktoberfest yeah. season. Um, you know, talking about getting people into the tap room, what does it mean to you or, again, for better or worse, coming off of something like Great American Beer Fest, do you think that plays into how people approach coming into breweries um, and what that means to you? It's tricky, I, you know, the festivals are taking probably more of my take on it is this tap room is like our biggest selling point. You know, I'm, I hate to kind of crush my ego, but no one's coming in here for specifically for the beer. They're coming in here for the ambiance. Our staff does such a great job. Sure. Um, they're coming in here for the space. Um, it just, happens that we you know have i guess good enough beer that that they can enjoy that too um but you know having someone come in here is our biggest selling point so pouring beer at a festival it's really hard to gauge okay are you you know how much am i going to get you to come visit us depending on where you live obviously you know we're drawing mostly from people around here and mm -hmm. i'd say a lot of breweries are you know the same way yeah um, we aren't out in the market distributing, we aren't, you know, we're canning, but everything is, we're selling out of our, right. our, our fridge. Right. Um, so the festivals, it's, you know, if we were trying to push our product out into the market. I'd say it's more important because you're getting that visibility of someone's like, oh, I have tried their beer and now I'm in the supermarket and I see yeah. that, or I'm at sure. the liquor store. Whereas sure. it's like, you're either going to come here cause you want to see the space you know, or maybe you did really enjoy the beer that we poured and you wanted to try it out. Um, yeah. So we don't participate in a lot of festivals. It's mm -hmm. gotta be pretty close. Um, you know, GABF, I think it's hard for, we're just such a small brewery. It's hard for us to really stand out. Mm -hmm. um, if the booth wasn't free, I don't know if we would have participated in it. Um, Cause it's, you know, a lot of labor on our end. Sure. Um, we're pretty small staffed as is. So mm -hmm. we were stretched then um, with managing in here as well right. as staffing over there. Right. Um, and then obviously like, you know, the beer, it's cheap to produce in some regards, but it, those kegs are pretty valuable to Absolutely. us, you know? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tricky. You know, I, I don't think that our business model is like built to to be that and as much as i'd love for us to be a hype brewery and you know have all these followers are un, untapped and you know have kind of the 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 beer nerds like really push to come in here it just isn't who we are what our demographic is you know um and so it's just I, the festivals for us i don't think play as big of a selling point right. for us Right. But, you know, I understand other breweries that 
you know, it makes way more sense for them. Yeah, sure. Uh, at the end of the day, I feel it's always about your why, right? Yeah. So yeah. I guess what I'm hearing, like the why is really this public offering, like here's the space. Community. Community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come come have a beer, come chat with some friends or just a place to go. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard too. Like you're pouring an ounce of beer. Like oh, that's yeah. all they can get. Like I, I would, if our staff really short poured any beer just you know some for a guest to just sample i'd say give them you know two to three ounces yeah. so you can't really taste the beer and yeah so i think that's the other hard thing is it's just so quick 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 and it's really hard to stand out and your palate's okay. probably getting destroyed by oh, yeah. everything else i think the festivals are always interesting um because for some it is a very big deal right mm. like you're putting yourself out there um from homebrew to this is all I ever want to do and I want it to be the best mm. beer that's ever created. And and I get that and I appreciate that, especially after going to the awards ceremony uh -huh. and like how excited everybody was. It was hard not to get hyped up with them. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, so yeah. Uh, have have you done World Beer Cup or anything? Yeah, like we've that put, as well? we'll yeah. always put yeah. it, you know, okay. I mean, it, it's, one, it, you know, it, the feedback I think you kind of always have to take with a yeah. grain of salt yeah. a little bit. And um, I've talked with a couple other brewers and just saying, like, what is like a, you know, what do you consider a win? Because obviously, yeah. like, your odds are so small and you just don't, don't know. Depending on the category. Yeah. yeah. And so that, you know, I, I think just kind of trying to understand, like, how do you view this feed, feedback and what are you trying to get out of it? Yep. Um, so we'll always throw in, you know, a couple beers into those and. Yeah, you, know, you kind of always keep your fingers crossed. Again, like I, even if we won, I don't know if it would matter to our following right. our guests and right. so You know, I, I think that that's more of like an ego thing for <laughs> probably like me personally and sure. feeling you like said you, that. you fit into the industry <laughs> a little. Like, you know, I feel like that would be like okay, like am I going to be accepted a little bit more by the industry? You know, type thing. It, it also kind of forces you into having it on. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Also that. For sure. Exactly. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but yeah. Yeah. Um, what about for our industry folks that are watching, listening in, you know, um, you talk about your staff being a big part of the ambiance, mm -hmm. right? And the good experience. Um, how do you go about um, either vetting uh, individuals that come in and want to be a part of public offering mm -hmm. uh, and or, you know... Um, I had a way better question. Just how do you go about that? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it sounded way better in my head. Uh, anyway, so people that are excited about yeah. what you're excited about. Yeah. I feel like that's always a hard thing, yeah. right? Especially when it's close. Yeah. You know, I, we've been fortunate that for the most part, our staff, if anyone's left, it's because it hasn't been some issue that we necessarily had with, with them as, you know, management or they had with us. It was they got, you know, either they're like moving out of the industry or they got a promotion at a different job sure. and didn't have time. Um, you know, I, it's I think it's easy for us to we run really like small staff in here and we're trying to maximize our staff's take home. Uh, so we're often, you know, we're often running with like one one beer tender at a time, sure. um, maybe two. Okay. Um, on the weekends and it's like a quick overlap, you know, and I know our staff will kind of push sometimes of being like, I want to cut that, you know, like we'll have to say like, you need to stay yeah. until four. Cause we're worried. Like we have seen that we get these pushes. So sure. like, just make sure that, that you don't get stuck. Cause there is a, you know, there is a certain level of service that I think we're trying to, to provide in here. Sure. And when you're, you know, just stuck behind the bar, it's, it's hard to do. And, you know, Absolutely. we've got a big space and we want to make sure that it's clean and, and kept up and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, but so, you know, I think a big selling point for us with staff is like you, you your take home's pretty good. Like yeah. it's really good, you know, and I think even looking at, at other breweries and kind of seeing what they are saying, you know, take home is like where we fit on that you know, competitive landscape, sure. I'd say like sure. a, a good venture to push us on the higher side. Awesome. Um, you know, we also, you know, there are some expectations from our staff as well. And um, it's, you know, it's hard. Like, I think the biggest thing is 
I, I don't, I've got a family. I kind of purposely am in the back and here eight to five Monday through Friday. Cause yeah. that's when I can afford to be in here. Right. Um, and so I don't get a ton of overlap with staff all the time. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out like how much do you want me in here or need me in here? Or is yeah. it like, Oh my gosh, you're like, the dad is coming back. <laughs> like, I don't want, yes, you, you know, it's like that. tricky. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's, it's hard. I, I think for me personally, that's kind of the hard disconnect in some regards is that I see and hear and know of a lot of things, maybe, maybe more than like our staff totally understands, but like I might not see everyone on, on a regular basis because yeah. um, we've got a couple staff members that have full time Monday through Friday jobs and do this as supplemental yeah. income. Sure. And they're here on a Saturday or Sunday yeah. and they just can't get over here and, and whatnot. So, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, we've been fortunate with, with our staff that we've had yeah. great staff and um, you know, I know that all of our guests and regulars like really, you know, appreciate them and, and they do a great job with, with Yeah. I always feel like you got to tip your hat a little bit to the front line. Uh -huh. And and not that I, I don't personally feel like anything is really that different post COVID when it comes to the service industry. There's plenty of people that uh -huh. have disagreed with me on that uh -huh. because there's always this, well, you know, you can kind of be more choosy uh -huh. about where you want to be. Uh -huh. Right. And so I think if it, you know, the selling point is that there's a great take home and I'm here for supplemental income, or maybe it's all that I do because I don't really overly need that much. Uh -huh. That's a great selling point. Uh -huh. And then I always feel like there's a lot that goes behind of, you know, how, how everyone reciprocates one another and uh -huh. how you're treated. So, and if it's about community and collaboration, I feel like, yeah, cool. Right. Like, yeah. I feel like that makes it easier on top of, it's not just about the money. It's often sometimes about the money, but it's yeah, I mean, no, way, I, right? and, like, you know, I think you got to, be. you have to figure out what your, because there, we do have, we have had, and, you know, there's some staff members that the key driver is that is like, what is my take home every mm -hmm. single day? And I totally respect that. Like, Absolutely. it's, that's not, you know, your motivation is your motivation, yeah. but we just want to make sure that everyone's kind of like in line with things. And, um, I think it's hard to, you know, for me at least, like, at the end of the day, this is still a business and it's yeah. like yep. you're it's breweries, I think very, look very blue collar, but like the business is very white collar in some regards. And it's like, how do you like, you want to be a business? how do you like make yeah. everyone <laughs> see that, you know? And, yeah. and I, like a, a big learning point for me is just, no one's going to care as much as I do, exactly. you know, and you kind of have to take a step back a little bit and like, I can't nag you about this because I understand why you don't care about it, but like, <laughs> yeah. it means a lot to me, right. yeah. you know? Right. And so it's kind of right. just fine. And like, I've, I've had to learn and grow from that a lot too, sure. and figure out like, where can I step in? When can I step in? How can I step in? And, sure. um, yeah. So it's the beauty of growing yeah, in relationships. For sure. for sure. Love that. Do you have? No. All right. Last but not least. Okay. It's like I have my, my one last one. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll do my one okay. last one. If you could be any beer in the world, what beer would you be and why? Oh, man. Like specific name or just anything? Dealer's choice. Style, name. Um, I gravitate towards um, Southern Hemisphere hops. All right. Um, I've never gotten down to New Zealand. My wife did a semester abroad down there. We always oh. talk about going down there. So um, I think kind of like going and you know i know there are breweries that are tied to the hot farms and kind of like doing that would be i think something that i probably care the most about you know cool. um so i love that yeah. that's a great answer all right this is this I'm is my to New Zealand hops. <laughs> they're, they're also my favorite hops though i, I do uh, <laughs> my new favorite question that we started asking over uh jbf people was if there's a style of beer you wish would fall off the face of the planet what oh, style would it be okay. <laughs> i like it because it's controversial and people get really spicy yeah about yeah it. yeah <laughs> personally like and this is going to sound really basic but like the the brown or amber ale like you just get so many i, I think that they can be interesting and i would like like to figure out a way to make them interesting but i feel like 
the, my issue with them is someone comes in and they're so hard headed of like, I want, you know, this beer and this is all I want and I'm not going to go explore anything out. Yeah. And I feel like the, the beers that those people are looking for are like the amber or a brown. <laughs> and I'm like, we don't have that. And then it's kind of like, well, why don't you? And it's like, well, we tried and it just didn't sell. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> as much as I want to have something for everyone, you know, we just can't yeah. afford to do it. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where I just like, I just wish that you would be willing to like branch out a little bit, you know, <laughs> and, and try this. So All right. I probably just, even though like, I feel like that's like one of the first things that I homebrewed and that's like how you like got your yeah. start, you know, you're yeah. like, okay, like let's move on. It's, I feel like so many <laughs> other beers have kind of like changed and progressed and gotten more interesting. And those beers, it's just like, this is it. They're there for the people that yeah. don't want change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's a yeah. good answer. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, thank much. you all. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for taking the time Absolutely. to hang out with us and we'll be back.